All right, the Kennedy family does not usually want to talk about its secrets in public, but this morning, Senator Ted Kennedy's youngest son is revealing them. Former Rhode Island Congressman Patrick Kennedy writes of his own mental illness and addictions. He also looks at his parents' problems with alcohol and his mother's depression. Patrick Kennedy believes his father suffered from post-traumatic stress after two of his brothers were assassinated. He spoke with Leslie Stahl for last night's 60 Minutes. You actually say that... Because nobody talked about these things in the family, you were all kind of like zombies. You use that word, zombies. Well, we were uh, living in a limbo land where all of this chaos, this emotional turmoil was happening, and we were expected just to live through it. This is the first time a Kennedy has been this open about the family secrets these particular secrets. Are you worried about how the family's going to react? I know how some of them are going to react because I've already... Oh, they've seen got, the book? Yeah, I've, I've showed the book. So they're not pleased? No. They're angry? They're angry. Patrick Kennedy's new memoir is A Common Struggle. We're pleased to welcome back to Studio 57. Welcome. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, some say this is an act of courage for you to do this. You understood that there would be people in the family who preferred these things not be said. Why were you motivated to say this? Well, we're at a point of time in American history where we're finally coming out of the shadows for those of us suffering from mental illness and addiction. And it's absolutely crucial to change public policy. Look at the tragedies in Umpqua. Look at all of the other tragedies. All of them are a result of a failed mental health system. Why is that allowed to continue? Because we're all silent about these issues. How many people could have said that that shooter needed to get treatment or stay in treatment? Nobody, because no one talks about these issues, Charlie. How many of the other shooters should have been brought into treatment and made to stay in treatment because they had a severe mental illness? No one said a word, Charlie. There are consequences. We have 41,000 overdoses a year. We have nearly 42,000 suicides a year. This is a public health epidemic. And I'm telling my story. It's just a small story in light of what most families face. And that is, you know someone in your family is suffering from alcohol or addiction. You don't say a word. You know they've had psychosis, but oh, that's their personal issue. That's why I told this story, so that others could tell their story. The irony is that, that your father was suffering uh, and had made health care his primary legislative goal and yet did not seek treatment. Well, Charlie, I mean, he came from a different generation. No offense. I mean, it was just not spoken of in his generation. And it's tough for my generation to even break the silence. But we have to, because we're in a new generation. I want to make sure for my children, and I'm having another child in about, you know, a couple of weeks, that they don't have to grow up with this fear that someone can talk to them if they have an issue. I applaud you for talking about this. And so let's talk about kind of your own family scenario. You write in the book your dad, Ted Kennedy, was probably an alcoholic. You confronted him, and what did he do? Well, he didn't want to talk about it. That's the common struggle. All of us want to talk about this with our families. Our families don't want to talk about it. That is universal, Nora. And there's few exceptions, but mine was not an exception. We were part of the rule. Your father even took you to Chappaquiddick, where, of course, um, he b crashed a car and a young woman died in that car. And when he took you there, was he even able to admit then what had happened? Well, it was upon an anniversary, and he really didn't want to talk about it, but he knew he had to say something. And what he said was very little, and that was the message I got, is that we shouldn't talk about I this. I want to talk about this, because you talk about so openly and honestly in this book, sort of the shame and the silence surrounding this. You open the book with 2006, the episode where you're in your green Mustang convertible, and you crash it on Capitol Hill. Right. You had no idea. You were so out of it. No, I was out of it on so many levels. You I had been on... to rehab five months before for opiate addiction, and then I had self-medicated with Ambien, Phenergan, anything else, alcohol, after that, and I thought I was okay. That's the delusion of this illness. And then you say you, your dad called you. You were worried you woke up in the morning. You were worried that you might have killed someone. And then after you realized it was just a car crash, your father called you and you write in the book, your father said, I saw a picture of the car and I don't know why they're making such a big deal of this. It looked to me like it was just a little fender bender. Well, he... it was 
you know, physically speaking, a little fender bender, but it didn't speak to the larger truth, and that was I was in crisis, and I needed to deal with it in a way that wasn't sufficient to my earlier treatment. And so when you came out publicly and admitted everything, I mean, the, that day, that next day, admitted your addiction, your father didn't want to talk to you, right? He was angry at you. Yeah, well, he didn't feel good about me talking about my issues because it reflected poorly on everyone else. Well, it's not just you and your father. What I found interesting is that you bring your mother into this conversation. There's an episode you talk about where she's so high in a terry cloth robe when dignitaries are walking in and out of the house. What's been the hardest revelation from this book that your family has had to deal with? What has hurt them the most? Well, I think all of it's hurtful because it's the shame we don't want to discuss. That is the bottom line. So what I talk about is what we all know, but we don't say anything about. And so when you do say something about it, it ends up being hurtful. And uh, I don't know what is more hurtful, because there is hurt to keeping this secret. It eats away at you. It'll kill you if you don't talk about it. In fact, we say therapy is about speaking about the things that are post-traumatic stress. If you don't talk about it, you're in trouble. And my dad was in trouble because he was never given an opportunity to talk about the brutal murder of his two brothers. It's shocking to think that no one went up to him and said, hey, Ted, you've suffered incomprehensible pain. You believe he was self-medicating. Well, yeah. if, if, we, if he had gone through what he went through today, he would have had a battery of mental health professionals say, hey, yeah, Ted, yeah. listen, you got it. And no one would have held it against him. In fact, they would have celebrated it. But he came from a different time, right. and he paid the price for it. Well, we thank you so much for your candid answers, Congressman Kennedy. Thank you. We'll hear more of your story in our next hour.